Alright guys, welcome on cgtotsplus.com and thank you for watching my video about creating an architectural visualization using V-Ray and 3D Studio Max 2009. So, to begin, I'm gonna explain how the tutorial is gonna be. It will be a 3 day series tutorial. 3 day series tutorial and in each day we're gonna find a theoretical tutorial and a practical tutorial. So for the theoric part I'm gonna explain in this first day how the lights and the cameras of V-Ray works. So if we enable V-Ray in our rendering setup, so by clicking F10 or going to rendering and render setup, here we can scroll down and choose and on the assign render rollout, click on this button and choose V-Ray. So here it's V-Ray and it's pretty simple to use V-Ray I think it's the most easiest render to use according uh, or besides the scanline renderer so if we go to the lights tab on V-Ray you can scroll down here and choose V-Ray and here you have V-Ray light V-Ray IES and V-Ray Sun. I'm gonna concentrate on the V-Ray light now and then I'm gonna go to the V-Ray Sun. V-Ray IES is mostly I think used for interior scenes and I explain how it works briefly but uh, so in the V-Ray light we have three types the plane type, dome type and sphere type. I'm gonna concentrate on the plane and dome type. The sphere is used to simulate bulbs and lamps etc so for an example if I create scene a simple scene okay I'm gonna go to V-Ray and choose a V-Ray plane so and put it there so we're gonna have an infinite plane okay and I'm gonna create a simple sphere okay I'm gonna activate auto grid so it's so you can make it any size you want okay and move it a little bit higher so to the front view let's adjust it according to this one okay okay so back to perspective I'm gonna create a box maybe so just we see how the lights work and let's create what uh, go to the extended primitives and uh, let's do not notorious anything I'm not back here and choose the top a tube or something like this okay just don't need this one and just we have smooth and nice edges and if we render so now show the save frame so you have an idea of what our image gonna look like okay and hit render or F9 and here it is you can see that it's pretty simple and it and it's ugly if I can say so so press F10 again and I'm now activate the little option which is the indirect illumination and this this is pretty simple to use and provides a lot of techniques or tweaking to get nice and realistic renders so if it's well parametered so to get into it sorry I got some problem with my mic so uh, back so into the indirect illumination tab what we can see is that we have so first of all in old versions of V-Ray so you will find the indirect illumination tab included with the V-Ray tab so you'll find the indirect illumination, the radiance map etc in this tab okay so just for newer versions they they just moved these rollouts into a new tab direct illumination or GI or global illumination so for more for more easy of use etc okay so here in the direct illumination tab I'm not just explain briefly because it's really simple to understand or just 
if you have done scientific scientific uh, branch you know in the college or the lycée you'll find that it's very easy because you started you studied lightning and I, I really like this these lessons because they provided a, a whole new point of view for for the lightning and what's 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 around us so you'll know that everything is not really existing and it's light which is provides uh, such things so briefly I'm not talk about the indirect elimination so if we enable it on cl by clicking th this checkbox you'll find all little settings they are not too too much so and they're really easy to understand so the GI caustics here which is the reflective and refractive so which which of the refractive and reflective the GI will affect so as simple as this and saturation I think you know it post processing so the more the the more the more higher the more your image gonna the, the more colors will look uh, like so uh, <laughs> sorry for my English hope you'll understand so if we put it to like 10 you'll have a very very light red you know if I show you an example in Photoshop okay here we are in Photoshop and I'll show you what what I mean by saturation so here if I go to image and here adjustments and then use saturation you'll find if I increase saturation we have a more more powerful colors you know and if I get back we'll more have a white black and white image so the more the saturation the more you'll have the colors okay and back to 3d studio max you'll find that we have a contrast and what is contrast? Contrast is really simple. It's the difference between black and white. And if I come here to the contrast and get it upper, it works pretty same as the saturation, but in way different. And it's the difference between the black areas and white areas, and which can provide really nice images. So back to 3D Studio Max, I'm now going to talk about the primary bounces and the secondary bounces. The primary bounce is the first hit of a light ray on an object, so it's pretty easy. And the secondary bounce is the second, the second hit of the light ray on the object or the return off. So it's pretty simple. If I would show you an example here, a simple example will be to like this so if I draw this is oops sorry a second so this is will be this will be the first bounce and this is the second bounce okay pretty easy so I'm not clear this to okay and I'm not talk a little bit now so to get into it, let's explain how the the light cache and the error, the light cap, the primary bounce and the secondary bounce work. So I will maximize my view. Okay, and the primary bounce it's really useful to use the R the irradiance map, which will provide nice and pretty much advanced settings to to use in your scene or to lighten up your scene if I choose irradiance map here and reforce and let's say if you look up here in the built-in presets you'll find some presets which is which will give you some pre parametered parameters if I can say so uh, it's very easy for who want to spend a lot of time tweaking this this parameters here which will I will explain a little lo later on so for medium preset it's really useful for production for production or final rendering and very low is for tests so if I switch back to custom and put this to zero and this one to zero and I render my scene you'll see that I have only one path okay and this is this is because of the difference between so I'll show the cal show calc face show calculation face 
and and render again you'll see here that we have some some buckets here which are which are the the picking samples if I if you count here how many dots we have so I especially didn't use if we count how much dots we have here it will be 64 by 64 and this is can be defined here in the settings rollout in the rendering region division so here if I put it to like 82 and render again I'll have a more bigger bucket and this will take the samples for the radiance map so the more the more bigger the more less samples the less samples will be taken I hope this is clear for a 64 if I go back to indirect elimination and choose to use a minimum rate of a minimum rate of like minus one okay and render the image again you you notice that the irradiance map is the half I can see that the half of my image resolution so minus two would be two halves okay so if I count here the the number of dots here which is here I will find just 32 and this is the the powerful option of using pre pre passes if you have minus one here you can use I don't know here if you put it to minus two you can here use minus one and this is really useful so in the first rate we're gonna guess gonna guess how the GI will be and in the second the second pass he will define it so if I take an example here you can see that the VRA makes a first pass which is prepass number one okay prepass number one and he gonna do another prepass okay and in this prepass he will gonna define how the global illumination will interact and uh, define the rays and how how the lightning will be so if I click on show samples and render again you'll see the samples of the V-ray or the irradiance map so here we are rendering the irradiance map only so for second bounce I choose known so you can see it uh, just before after lightning finishes or the calculation so if you if you can see here is the here is the the samples that the irradiance map used to lighten up my scene or to 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 work with GI. So if I zoom here, you'll notice that we have a lot of samples into the edges or on the object, and this me this is because of the primary bounce. So here it is the primary bounce. V-ray guesses how the lights or the the rays will interact with objects in the first in or in the first and second prepass and the second bounce will also use these informations to render the final image so or or the secondary bounce will be first being used so VRAID gets an idea of how GI will work and the irradiance map will then use it to render the final image and a lot the more the passes are used the more your accurate your scene will be and I just recommend you to don't use lo more passes because here if you have minus 3 and minus 2 you can see that we have poor poor samples we have a lot of if we if this was a final product image I would say that will be disaster a disaster so if we if I bring this one to minus five and this to minus two and let's render again you see that we have practically no samples and this is really would be a disaster so here we can use minus one and minus a three four or minus four for an example and this would would result in really poor scene with the example if you take a very low preset you can see that we have always closely or close minimum and rate values so here if I put it to minus 5 and here to minus 4 and render again 
this is just for test renders okay never use the settings for final or product images so you'll never get a good result and if I go to very high you'll see that we go on to positive values which is really if I go to minus 3 and here to 1 and render again sorry and render again you'll see that you will have a lot of samples which will define a good amount of of GI for our object and look here just when the final when the render finish you'll see a lot of samples which means that V-Ray is guessing how the light will interact with objects and if we see here if we take a look so where is it sorry here it is we have five passes so if we calculate it's pretty easy to count how much passes will be on so just waiting for this to finish and you can see that it took a bunch of time to render and this is can be easily explained by the way by the number of passes because if you use here it's something okay you can see here that we have a lot of samples and th this is where the most problematic or the most current the most popular problem that occurs in rendering in uh, architectural rendering when we have two walls that are connected here we can see I have a lot of problems for shadows and etc and this is can be solved I, I think after watching the video this video or this tutorial you'll know how to solve this kind of problems by just playing with your irradiance map and it's pretty simple to count how much passes so we have minus three and one and every so minus is the half of the image okay and this is one so we have no half and the half is eliminated so if you count one two three four five okay pretty simple now uh, let's move on to the hemisphere subdivision and the or first of all I'm gonna show you some of the algorith algorithms that are used in V-Ray so to guess uh, to guess how the lightning or the GI will work and I'll say you have to resolve them before so you need to have to be good at mathematics and this was going on and this pretty this really really complicated algorithms and you don't <laughs> you don't have to to know to play or to solve this algorithm because it's going behind the scenes and if you want to play with it I guess I pass a lot of hours playing with this so uh, to resolve it and you have a lot of information here you can use and it's pretty simple and this is another example okay and you see that it's a lot of using this cause and sinus and okay <laughs> I stopped talking about my X guys come back okay back to 3d studio max I'm now play I'm gonna explain a little bit what hemisphere subdivision if you draw a geosphere here if I suppose here and if I display the edge face suppose that from the center of each or the I make it a hemisphere before yes hemisphere suppose that in every something like this okay yes suppose in every center of these triangles there will be, there will be a ray so the more rays the more accurate your image will be as simple as this so if you have a nice or sorry if you have a good amount of hemisphere if I take this one to like I'm gonna use a very low preset and if I take this to I don't know 10 or so and render I think it's gonna be oh sorry second so here in the V-Ray I'm now in the global switches don't render final image okay so here you can see the amount of samples that are used in the the V-Ray so layer values like 2 okay and back to 
render final image okay and render again and we'll show the indirect light direct light and if you can see here because you have known if I put it to light cache and render again I think it's gonna have some so so back to V-Ray I have some problems there with the PC sorry uh, here as I said we were in the hemisphere subdivisions and as I said there will be imagine a sphere or a geosphere and from each polygon or triangle from the center it will be ray the more the more ray the more this value is the best the result will be okay and this is a really useful option so we can use it to increase your render quality and uh, it's really cool the look here if I show you here you can see that we have a little weird image and this is because of the hemisphere subdivision if I drop this value to like 20 you'll, ha you'll notice that you're gonna have a little more accurate image and this is the and this is the 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 trick here is if I put it to one okay and render okay we'll have something like this and I'm, I'm gonna copy it minimize it and show samples and render again <laughs> if I cancel here and if we superpose this image these two images if I go here and desktop and just name it anything and save it as jpeg okay and this one too okay dot jpeg just to show you something really interesting and if I back to photoshop and open it my two images okay my two images this one here and this one here okay and if I pick the sorry what's happening what happened okay and bring this one here and just and close this one okay and I'm not superpose this two. so change the light mode to lighten or just here lighten okay you can see that the samples are placed in each point where you can see these light spots if you take here this spot here I think it's like I call them cells so you can see and it the sample is right in the middle so here we have a lot of samples so each point each sample is in the the middle of the the hemi or the the cell in middle in the middle of each cell in the center so the more you have the the sample the, the more samples you have and the more hemisphere you have the the more accurate your image will be so I just advise you to don't go further than 30 for the hemisphere subdivision for production so 30 40 maximum so further will make your rendering take a lot of time you can see and will not give a lot of changes and it's not what we want we have we want to good good image result and less time rendering okay so i spent a lot of time talking about inter irradiance map so we can move on so the inter interpolation sample is pretty easy to understand so the i have ish here which this is cells of an example hemisphere sampling it's very simple and if you see we have each point goes from the center and it's a really good good drawing here for explaining how the hemisphere sampling it, it works okay now let's move on uh, I'll show you an example with a spline if we take a circle here okay and draw it and back to the modify tab interpolation and move down this sample the steps or the interpolation so here at zero we have a square a perfect square so 
the more steps the more accurate we, our circles will look okay and this as simple as this now let's back to the light cache okay the light cache here so we use it usually as a secondary bounce and is very accurate so to explain you how this works I'm now use it as the two okay and render image with so you can see how this really works so if I get the subdivisions to like 10 okay you'll see that we are box in in 80s with the this and 60 bit computers you know and uh, this looks really weird or can be used as a render image a style of image I think so so f the subdivisions will guess how much rays are coming so the more we have subdivisions the more cells will be used I call them cells okay I don't know how to call them in in fact but I call them cells okay so the more subdivisions you have the more samples it's as simple as using a turbo smooth or mesh smooth on an object so the more the more iterations you have the smoother your object will be as simple as this so if we go to 100 you'll notice that we have a more accurate image but we say have this cells there or this unrealistic looking so if I go to 300 and render again you'll see that you begin to have something interesting uh, especially on the sphere here so back to 500 okay I'm just getting up so you can see how it how it works okay and this is really simple so back to 1000 for an example 1000 will be I think perfect for this image but will also take more time to render and this is a problem you have to tweak the secondary bounce and the primary bounce so you can you can have so here we are using only light cache as primary and secondary bounce and this is why we, we don't get a really nice result so we have to go higher in the in the subdivisions so 3000 for example and render again and I think we're gonna have also some problems okay so it's taking like one minute to render so I pause the video so here we are coming to the end and we render and you can see that we got also an imperfect image and this is because we're using the light cache as primary and secondary balance and this won't work at all so but just to give you an idea how this works the subdivisions works now for the simple size if I show show the calculation phase and don't render final image okay back to indirect elimination and render again you'll see that we have this is all samples okay and to work with if I go just to like 5 okay 5 and render again okay you'll see that we have 25 samples if you can 1 2 3 4 ta, 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 25 if I got got to 1 I'll have just one sample okay two here it is we're gonna have four samples okay four we're gonna have 16 and so on so uh, this is a nice idea how to understand how the light cache works so if you for example if you get 64 by 48 image so how do you figure out how to use this uh, actually for small images or small project I use 100 and 100 is very effective you can see it's pretty good can be improved but in the range of 100 200 it's really cool and can be really useful here 200 we can have nice nice image and for for small projects or interior scenes I will advise you to use a higher values from 1000 to 2050 and no more because with 1000 you'll get in sm in in small scenes it's almost perfect you know so if we render again and let it finish 
okay you have the final result right now okay and this is why you have to apply with the subdivisions and this can really improve your image for the sample size like I explained it in each cell there will be array and the more cells and the less simple size will be the more accurate your image will be if I put this to one and render again you'll see uh, back here I'm not don't render final image okay and render you'll see in each cell will have a s array so if I put it to like zero zero two and render again you'll see that we have a more accurate image and this because the if you have enough subdivisions to the simple size to use you'll have a, a smooth image for a more clear idea if I put the subdivisions to one and use uh, 002 simple size this won't look realistic at all because we have only just subdivisions and we want a 002 simple size for each cell so it's not logic so we want to like 100 and this will give a, right, a really smooth result and we, what what we are searching for so I hope this was clear clear for you and you understand if you don't please pass commands I'll answer all your questions so the number of passes will let you use all trades of your computer so or when you're using render form you know and for the number of passes will be or it's your computer which will if you have a core to do or uh, don't know how you say it in English C to D or core to do or uh, something like this you can l use eight trades four trades you know four trades will be nice and this is can speed up your rendering times or or such thing but if you have a quad core you can use uh, 16 I think and here I don't think it w it will get it will not improve anything but the more you have cores the more your you can use this number of passes so I'm gonna use 8 8 for core view it's perfect and I think we have seen everything here and we can switch to V-Ray lights so right quickly I'm not gonna talk about Vera light okay the Vera light are really useful lights for for getting those areas which don't receive enough light when using a sun or another type of light or like uh, in the Chris state I think tutorial on the Vera light studio you can see that he used Vera light and this they are perfect for this kind of lightning or maybe for windows okay when you are rendering interior scenes I'll show you in the sample now so in the perspective view I'm gonna create a light here over here okay and what I want you to know that the V-Ray lights uses to to emit light they use the half length and the half width so they don't only emit sorry I'm not just change the settings for the rendering because I'm gonna use a radiance map and light cache so very very low put it to like 1D theme maybe and for the light cache for the light cache okay it's perfect now render the image and why why V-Ray lights are not perfect for exterior lightning because actually they use attenuation what is attenuation or action this is what I call attenuation but I, I don't really know how they call it in the the industry but I just give you an idea attenuation is that V-Ray what's happening is that sorry for this I got some problems so is that the V oops is that the V-Ray lights use attenuation and attenuation is the means that near object will be more lightened and far objects will be dark so for exterior daylight rendering this won't co look realistic at all because in in real life objects in in daylight will be lightened with the same intensity of lights because the sun is hitting all what's around 
so and the V-Ray lights uses the half length, the half width and the attenuation system to provide smooth shadows and real nice l lamp lightning or, or or night lightning if you want to but for daylight exterior scenes this won't look realistic at all and let's see some of the parameters of the V-Ray light so if I draw a little light in top view like this okay and move a little bit and something such thing and back to perspective view and try to see oh it's pointing a little bit down so here if i if i something so you can see the very light and the objects if we render like this you can see that it takes so let's it continue okay rapidly man go on so here you can see that that the 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 V-ray light length and width determines how much light is emitted from this object so the bigger you have the more light and the more intense your 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 lightning will be so you have to play with the length width and the multiplier so if i put it to one i think we'll have maybe a nice lightning or nice ambient lightning it's a little too far so i'm using just generic parameters so it's not real size so you don't really get nice results so if i bring closer the image and you can see that the rendering is a lot faster and this because we are if I get the half length and you can see that maybe it will take we have more lightning see and this is a really pretty cool idea that you can use the half length and the half width to apply so with the multiplier if I, 500 500 so you can always try to find issues or solve some problems with using these parameters so I think that's all to say about V-Ray lights okay I think it's okay this is some parameters of casting shadows etc really simple we're gonna see them in the incoming part of the tutorial so here we have the V-Ray light type dome and what is dome? Dome it's such a skylight so uh, position means nothing in the, this type of light so if I get my light there and I render oh sorry I didn't manage it, the multiplier so bring it down to like 1 5 is too much higher for you get a nice ambient lightning and if I move if I move again this light over there nothing's gonna change so if I uncheck show calculation face and show calculation and render again you c you'd see that nothing's uh, changed only the point of view because I zoomed a little bit nothing's changed but the orientation of the light would determine the orientation of the shadow so if I make this light something like this okay and render I would have a less illumination or because it is going behind the horizon line or under the horizon line and if I move it something like this so it points a little bit further on top you can see that we get a darker image and this because it's going down so if I zoom again okay uh, just already did something like this you will see that we have maybe a perfect dark image see and this is acting like sun and what why I I'd want to talk with this about this and this because it's really fantastic for exterior scenes especially if I, I show you an example here which is sorry oops <laughs> what the hell so I show you an example really simple it's pretty nice example that uses a the light the dome lightning 
and the special function for the dome lightning which is to use HDRI as source of illumination and this is pretty cool so uh, for the ones who don't understand what is HDRI HDRI is pretty simple sorry I moved my my so the HDRI in computer graphics are are a process that that makes a greater difference or image difference or range high dynamic range a big or great range between the the most the darkest areas and the 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 and the lightest area so it provides a great dynamic range of luminance between the light lightest areas and the darkest areas and it's pretty simple if you click here you'll have the material map browser and choose V-Ray HDRI and press M okay and drag drop this one here and as an instance and here you can see that the V-Ray HDRI material appears and with with uh, its own interface so if we go back to the by default Autodesk 3D Studio Max so I uh, here maps and HDRI and we can have a lot of HDRI so I'm just the KC outside and it's by default with 3D Studio Max and if I got uh, bigger samples here you can see that it's distorted and here you can ha choose the map type for cubic if you have cubic map or spherical and most of the time they are spherical environment maps or HDRI so and here this is the overall multiplier the higher the most brighter as simple as this and the render multiplier as also so it's it don't illuminate the scene but in the render and hori horizontal rotation I think this is clear okay something like this oh one or zero at all and flip and etc this is really simple and gamma when creating some light scenes you can use it to increase the realism or something like this for the light scenes I really usually use this range here so and if I render my scene you can see that it uses the HDLI lightning to lighten up my scene so if an, for an example I'm gonna create a very simple very material here so I get back or concentrate in this two here after in the sequence when we will be modeling uh, or texturing uh, you can see that we have a nice chrome material here and it uses the HDRI to lighten up the scene this is really really fantastic really nice rendering it's fantastic especially when for, for using exterior renderings it can provide some realisms or pff, something really unique to the image and if we go here to the environment map or render setup environment rollout you can find that we have a special environment for a reflection refraction and th this will override max's default one so here I used the same HDRI map I used for the V-Ray light and you can see that we get a nice result if I click render and render the image again you can see that we have a really nice ambient lightning which is really cool and it's provided only by the HDRI and the multiplier for the multiplier for the 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 image or the light here doesn't even more works because the HDRI decides or works instead so if I bring up my multiplier here in the HDRI to something like this will be too much too far to light something like two we're gonna have lighter image as as you can see and this would not I think look realistic at all because it's too much lighted this uh, just a quick idea or this how works this type of lightning I'm gonna continue the on this way just to talk a little bit about the lights or the sphere lights 
which is really simple lightning uh, or they are used usually to sim light lamps and I I even I I don't when I purchased Virai I didn't use them at all I never use them in fact I I don't find this a good way to use them or I just use Omnis in for sim lighting lamps or the Virai IES I think so and finally the Virai Sun which is I think the most improved light or the most noticeable new uh, future on 3D Studio Ma or on V-Ray or 1.5 SP2 and as I said positions means nothing so as you as it you, it will provide the same lighting and this is why I like to use it for exterior scenes and this because it it uses the position of the sun to create a, a sky map okay to create a sky map and this sky map can be seen in the material editor by dragging dropping it here as an instance okay you can see it and this is the sky if I render my image in perspective view okay something like this you'll see that oops so something if I render my image now. okay if I render my image again you can see that the sky uh, yes uh, after I removed my I removed my AGRI that was applied in the reflection and I think the tutorial is getting longer and longer but I'll try to do my best so and we're gonna go to practical and if you know this all these you can switch and go directly to the practical part so here the material or the intensity is set to very low so zero zero one and for example if I press um, to see the, my skylight if I move my so the Sun don't interacts with with the position so if you are near you'll have the same lightning so you can see it's really it's really close to the, the object but we get same lightning but what's important is the position on the X or on the Z so if you get higher here we have we're gonna have something which will be another thing and here actually we can use uh, ride the V-Ray Sun without using a camera so a V-Ray physical camera I think so here it's too much 0 2 I think would work nicer you can see that we have another sky map and this is what I like because it's very useful for reflection or animations and uh, you can see also that it uses a lot of illumination so and this is the the thing with the V-Ray lots is that are very physical cameras as, as they provide realistic settings for for lighting up the scenes so we can have a nice amount of lightning okay so by using the share of speed and the ISO okay so I think we covered most of the topics there and we can go to the very physical camera or yes if I let the intensity multiplier to 1 you'll see that will I will have something like this and it we don't see anything so I'm gonna use the V-Ray physical camera which is here so I don't use the V-Ray dumb camera or anything else I just use it because I like it and I so that it really works so I get it a little up and views go to the physical camera here and here I can see my settings. So if I render the image, you can see a little improvement there. And that's because we have these new settings, which are the which are here the white balance and shutter speed and the film speed ISO. So here, the more you have the shutter speed, the more you have the less lightning will receive the camera so or not th the less lightning will receive the camera is just the shutter speed so if you it's so I explained if you take one 
for an example okay it will take a lot of time so it will take the more the share speed the more is open it the shutter is open it the more you the, the camera will, will receive light so lower values make your image brighter so if you are in night scene I think you'll let the shutter speed open it a little time so it receive a lot of lightning data and for for daylight we can use like 60 and we'll have also a nice nice lightning okay and this is not realistic for exterior lightning you can see it's a little bit dark so here 400 I think it's the best and if you check on Wikipedia I think here if you take film or shutter sorry shutter speed okay here you have a, na a good explanation of how it works and it's really impressive to, to see how to get kind of Im these images you know and we are also saying how do they get this it's just uh, here we used like one and this is a really really high speed and it's for only dark areas you know where it's completely dark and if uh, if you also type film speed or here yeah film speed I ISO so here in Wikipedia you'll find also go settings so let's see the film speed the film speed is acting also so if we have 700 also you receive a lot of lights and here that this means it's like in weather is gray 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 sky you know and if you put it to like five okay you it's gonna be really dark here five can be used for extremely lightning images or for getting a shira so for an example here I would put to like 50 and render again okay and this lo looks cool but needs improvement so like 90 and it will be okay here we can see that we have a nice one this is the two most used also by me I mean parameters to to adjust the lightning of oops what's going on of my scene so here okay or oh, and the white balance I usually use the daylight for exterior scenes which provides nice ambient nice looking to the image also you can you can use yours if you have some western images you can get something like this or something you know how to work with so here you have custom and okay so you have a lot of reference image lot of information in Wikipedia so it used the invert color so you have to, to also green magenta blue yellow thing and uh, so uh, if you put a blue color here or something more blue you'll have a nice yellow thing redish yes yellowish and this also settings can be used so when you use a daylight you can also modify this by using the default sun ozone and turbidity so if for the turbidity if I get it up you can see that we'll have a yellowish image which can be significantly like polluted air or something like this okay five we get nice between and for the ozone also same thing probably it the most you have you'll have bluish image and the less you'll have something like yellowish or you have to play with these settings to get nice results okay so here I reset I think I covered most of the topics and yes in Wikipedia here you can have a lot you have some of the presets here for the ASO 
or something so you can you have also the the curves that is used to understand how this works and the film speed is the measure of photographic films sensitivity to light as I said you can play it so in French I think if we have it yes you'll have some some presets that are here and you can just use translator to translate them so very nice very nice article in Wikipedia that provides a lot of a lot of sympathetic uh, information so uh, here we are finished the first part let's get into the application so see you in the next video